Welcome to Confessional Magazine. I'm Taylor, and today I am so honored to be joined here with Sydney Riley. Thank you for being here today, Sydney. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Of course. So, Sydney is an amazingly talented singer, songwriter, and he has such a beautiful story that has brought him um, to this point in his life and his path. And we're just so excited to like get to know him a little bit better. So, Sydney, when did you first? get into the actually let's start with you have such an amazing story you were hit with this illness mm -hmm. in your younger years and you can just let tell us your story and that will kind of guide us into how it developed into the music world and how you were able to find your voice and sure yeah uh, I'll t so i was in high school i was senior of high school i was in uh i, I sang and wrote like songs initially poems you know what that turned into songs in high school but it wasn't something that i uh, music in general wasn't something i took like super seriously at the time i was thinking i would you know more be a soccer player uh, to be honest and then i uh was on a like a retreat with our high school and fell like super you know deathly ill while i was there uh in la plata maryland <laughs> so I, I had something what's called acute viral myeloencephalitis and meningitis uh, which is both like viral encephalitis and meningitis, basically. Um, and so while I was on this retreat, I ended up going to the, the hospital in La Plata and uh, they didn't really know what was wrong with me. Uh, did a few spinal taps and then discovered this and they didn't have the capability to kind of you know look after me properly mm -hmm. there. And uh, it was, you know, as, my, as the way my mom describes it, it was one of those like snowy nights type of thing. And it was like the, they wanted to get a helicopter and put it, uh, but then you know, by, you know, the grace of God, good people and community, you know, there was some, uh, an ambulance crew that was literally getting off the shift that like saw my mom and then like just uh, offered to help and then put chains on the ambulance and then literally like drove me in this like blizzard two hours to Georgetown where there was like an open bed for me. Yeah. And then as soon as I got there, I had a seizure and slipped into a coma and then I was in a coma for two months. Uh, woke up and I was paralyzed from my neck down and I basically had to learn how to do everything again you know was not necessarily had no idea what uh you know I was and wasn't going to be able to do um and, and slowly steadily, just little by little <laughs> over the next year I kind of slowly started to get my life back yeah so Okay, so how old were you when, you know, this viral meningitis and encephalitis happened? 18. 18. Mm -hmm. I mean, and so then you're in this coma for two months. Did you remember, like, when you woke up from the coma, were you aware that you were in a hospital even? Or what was your, uh, like, last memory? Yeah, no, I, I, so when I woke up, I, the, my first memory of waking up anyway uh, was that you know, my, I looked over and my mom, uh, my dad and my sister are on the right side and my mom like panicked, you know, look on her face, <laughs> kind of came around and uh, was like, am I Rania? And my sister's name is Rania, right? And I looked at her like, what, you know, like, what are you talking about? And then they all kind of laughed because they were like, okay, good. At least he's like, knows I'm not, you know, who's who, you know? So yeah, <laughs> um, that was like the first memory I had of like coming back. But yeah, I didn't know, I what they told me right uh, early on was that I was asking for orange juice in a purple cup. So <laughs> I guess that was like the last memory I had. I don't remember asking for that. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's what they were saying. It's like, uh, initially that was the first thing I was wanting. So it seemed like, I guess time just kind of, you know, skipped past. I, I had a yeah. few like very vivid dreams while I remember, uh, while I was in my coma and I remember coming out of it. And, uh, once I could talk, uh, I couldn't talk for a little while after because I had a tracheotomy and all this. Um, mm -hmm. I remember like kind of arguing with my mom about, I had done certain things as in it was a, more like it was a memory, not a dream, because they seemed so real. Right. And it was something that it, it, I actually believed I had done these things. And she was like, uh, no, you've been here. You know? And then finally, when I came to accept it, it just was one of those, uh, you know, okay, I guess you're right. I was, I was here, but I mean, I'll tell you, I literally was like, you have, don't know what you're talking about. I did these things. And I did these, yeah, like yeah. the, the dreams were so real. Very so real. Yeah, totally. Wow. And it was more real than reality. If that makes, it doesn't make sense, but it, it's, it, it just seemed like it was, a, a it just seemed more 
uh, re- you know, real than anything. So yeah. it was, yeah, it was crazy. So anyway, so once and I kind of so got that back, <laughs> you, you did, you went through this crazy thing, which like no one can expect. It's not like you're planning for this or like, you know, you're playing soccer, you put on the shin guards because you know there's a chance of your shin getting hurt, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you exactly. can't, there's nothing you could have done to have like prevented like one of these viral things happening to you. So then learning to come out of that and like find yourself again. I know that I've seen the video and I can't wait to share it with other people, but I believe your first time walking unassisted after coming out of your coma was during your high school graduation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went from, you know, I was in a wheelchair for a while, then uh, I graduated to a walker. And then from a walker, I went to two canes and then one cane. And uh, I just, I guess I just left it back at the gym. Um, I don't even know if I was like nervous from graduating stuff. And I just realized like halfway, I was like, shoot, but I just kind of decided to do it. <laughs> you did it. And this beauty, th- this video, so there's, you know, someone has this on video that I've seen, and it's just a beautiful moment of just everyone just standing up and just surrounding you kind of, and just this applause of this kid has just gone through so much and look at him. Here he is coming out on the other side, walking and shining bright. And now like through that, you found your songwriting voice kind of, how did you like transition from like going through all of this, like really big, heavy stuff but using that in a way that you can be like, I now have this, I have this thing I can do. Totally. You know, it was, it, honestly, it was like a light switch because I remember even when I was a soccer player, I was, I could think about and see soccer in different ways. And then after I came out of it, I never, I, I couldn't connect with the game the same way anymore. Um, and at the same time, it's like, it just switched to songwriting for me. And it's like, it, I, I don't feel bad about it. It wasn't like I was, you know, I just, I just lost any interest in soccer that I had, yeah, <laughs> which is really odd. I don't know. It's, I can't even. I don't even remember enough to be sad about it. But I was just like, okay, yeah. And now I'm just <laughs> all committed to the, the writing, and it was more just like you know, a passion that I just was excited that I just kind of discovered, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So where? What? I know you have villain that has not yet been released. Oh yeah, it just, just got just released earlier or, this week. Yeah, yeah, it just, just came released. Out. Just okay. released. Yeah, yeah. I know I, I was able to listen to it, but I didn't know if that was like a free like oh, little yeah. sample, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so you got that and it's so like I just love your voice and the way that you're able to tell a story through like your writing and everything. So what is your writing process like? Do you come up with the do you hear the music first or are you a words and story first kind of person? Yeah. You know, it's funny. I uh, I'm usually a melody type first, uh, like what I guess in mean, uh, a lot of songwriters will call like top line or you know focused kind of uh, melody dri- driven uh, music. Initially, I, I definitely think of you know the catchy thing first, whatever sticks before I have words for it. Um, and then you know I carry my phone and do record voice memos, and I'm thinking about stuff all the time. And ideally, I can piece them together, but uh, yeah, once I kind of get a good, you know, something that I'm like, oh, I like this is good, um, uh, then I'll kind of, you know, try to build on it from there. I love that. Um, mm-hmm. And so how can our listeners or readers or viewers, how can we find and listen to your music or also like follow you to see anything that you might have up and coming? Because it's exciting now that like pandemic worlds is opening up. I'm so hopeful to be able to see people like you performing live yeah yeah i know right yeah <laughs> um well I'm, i uh, my website's iamsydneyreilly.com i that's more informational to be honest with you i'm i try to like live on instagram as much as possible these days so uh, my handle's at i am sydney riley so i'm kind of always there in some capacity sharing some music stuff so yeah luckily now that things are kind of opening up you know a bit i'm looking forward to kind of you know getting back out there a bit. so i'm going to do some shows in new york uh coming up probably initially and then around the dc area and northern virginia area as well that's so exciting i mean i can't wait to just you know there's nothing there's literally nothing better to me you know opinion based but nothing better than live music and people just being out there and just feeling the music and being in a room where you can spread this kind of joy it's totally untouchable it's all about the right connection right people getting the experience stuff right together yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I know that um, your mom actually wrote, and uh, your mom is a huge part of your life still. And she absolutely. wrote, she wrote a book. 
Mm-hmm. Um, what can you tell us about this book? And I just, I think it's so special because it's about um, medical, like ad, advocating for a loved one's medical needs during all these times. So, yeah. And you know, like kind of what I had alluded, alluded to a little bit earlier. Uh, yeah. Like I, my kind of, I got sick and I got better, but like, I think my whole like story is not really about me. It's more about the community of people that came together to like make you know, uh, move forward to accomplish something together, which was getting me better. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I think there's like the people at the ambulance, the people in the community in my high school that supported me and my mom while I was, you know, in a coma. And she was like, you know, like some, like people came to our house to help cook for us and clean for us while she was at the hospital with me, you know, so like, you know, they say it takes a village, but the story and my story is really about, you know, the community that came together, yeah. the people that came together. I, I think it's more important to focus on them uh, and what can inspire us, you know what I mean? Versus just like, you know, just, I'm just like a guy, you know, so it's like, with that said, uh, one thing that my mom, uh, did, so she wrote, yeah, she wrote this book together based on being a, like a med- medical advocate for, uh, you know, loved ones and, you know, how does that work? What do you, what's okay to, uh, to push what's not like, what she would call pleasantly persistent, right? Uh, <laughs> I love but, that. I yeah, love but, that. <laughs> you know, like it's it, uh, you need you need people in your corner, you know, like that. So I mean, I'm I'm here today because of her, uh, among so many other people that helped me. So you know, it it's one of those things that you know, kind of what you you guys are all about too, about reminding everybody that, that we're stronger together and community and you know, working together is uh, the way that we can help each other. You know. Um, achieve whatever we want in our lives right so i think part of what uh you her uh, part of what the book is about is how to kind of be a medical advocate for family members for loved ones whichever um when they're in these dire situations mm-hmm. and it's also you know about building a community around that right so being a support system for people that need help just like she got it you know she wants to mm-hmm. kind of pay it forward so whether she knows you or not, it's irrelevant. You know, she 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 is there to be a support system for people that need it. Um, yeah. And I think it was therapeutic for her too because uh, she went through a lot. You know, with me being sick like that. You know, like the first night that I arrived at the hospital, there were two other people that arrived with uh, meningitis alone, and they passed that night. Right. So like this, you know, I can't even the stuff that she went through. Just you know, I'm sure it was traumatic for her just as a mother, you know, I can't even imagine. Yeah. So I think it was therapeutic for her to kind of get that out as well. Um, so a lot of it just kind of goes through, you know, my illness and recovery a bit. Um, and also, uh, really tries to highlight certain areas of, you know, how to talk or how to stand up and where, to, where to push and where not to, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And, um, I think it's a, it's a, if anything, it's a good reflection of what we are capable of. Yeah. 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 That, that's such a beautiful thing. And it's so true. I mean, we, none of us would be where we are without the person behind us or in front of us. Right. So we need to just look out for each other. Totally. By and, all means. It, yeah. Um, we need to acknowledge that's, that too, you know, it's yeah. important, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's such a beautiful thing. I just, I appreciate that so much, Sydney. Um, so what kind of advice would you, or I don't even know how to like, word this properly but what kind of advice would you give to somebody that was maybe going through a hurdle not obviously everyone's not going to get meningitis god Mm -hmm. willing right but there's other struggles or things that people might be going through in their own personal life what kind of advice would you give to another young artist that might be trying to find their voice or make their way um i think one thing I would do, uh, some, one piece of advice I would give is to be confident in yourself, in your ability, uh, whatever that is, whatever you want to be doing, whatever you're passionate about, uh, don't make excuses, right? Like mm-hmm. in the sense of not having the confidence uh, to be able to do it. If you're confident, and you're passionate about it, just do it. A lot of people aren't confident in what they're doing. Uh, you know what I mean? But they move forward and they take a step. So uh, I'd say, you know, some piece of advice is take it one day at a time, one bite at a time. And you know, um, really focus on what you're passionate about. And the second thing I would tell you is to look for like-minded, positive, collaborative people and work to collaborate with good people that you can learn from as often as possible. It doesn't even matter where it comes from. 
You can mm-hmm. learn a lot from a lot from everybody. Amen. So, That's so yeah. true. Um, and I always like to ask this question, but where would you like to see yourself in five years, both personally and professionally? You know, I, uh, obviously I would like to still be, uh, you know, doing music, writing music, continuing to do that. Um, I think, you know, it's funny because a lot of, a lot of what I have is just being grateful and focusing on that from what I have. So I really am just wanting to be in a position where, I'm, you know, I have my health continued and I'm able to still get up every morning and live a life of passion and, and, you know, and try to spread that uh, and keep collaborating with great people along the way. Yeah. So on that note, who, if you, let's see, three artists, doesn't matter living or past. Mm-hmm. If you could collaborate with three artists, who would they be? Sure. Um, I'd say Boys to Men, Michael Jackson, and Ray Charles would probably be my Whoa! three. Yeah. Did that so fast? Have you been yeah, asked did, yeah. this question before? <laughs> no, no. I just, I, I have like my own experiences with each of those with regards to why I'm like enamored by them, you know? So, yeah. I love that. Yeah. I love that so much. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, thank you so much. And I'm sure that we will be in touch again. And I can't wait to learn more, even more about your story, because there's even more to know and for you to share. And the way that people can get to know you better is by following your Instagram page and all of your music and downloading it anywhere that they can. And so follow Sydney Riley Music. It's S-I-D-N-E-Y-R-I-L-E-Y. And just spread the word, spread the music, because again, we're going to say it a million times till the cows come home, but nothing makes people and can connect us more than just music and just truly just having the conversation with each other and getting it on the table. Absolutely. And thank you very much. And thank you for all you do at Professional Magazine as well. Oh, thank you so much, Sydney. And um, we will talk soon and I can't wait to share your music and just Keep it coming because it's everything you're doing is so great. Oh, sounds great. Thank you so much. I will. Thank you. We'll talk soon. Sounds great. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.